This is Yael Asowski. He is the Deputy Director of Consumer Choice Center. So thank you for speaking with us today. Wonderful. Thank you, Gretchen. Yes, I have a small little presentation, very, very small. Uh, we'll try to have a little bit of fun with it. Um, this is going to be about the uniform commercial code. Um, so we talked about banks before, heard about you know how they're going in the economy. I want to talk about the future of banks uh, or post-bank, uh, as it were. But this is a question that we've seen come up in various states. We're talking about uh, various rule changes to commercial law and how it impacts Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and then also the future of central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Uh, so when did all this kind of pop up? Uh, essentially, you, you have a couple of notions here in these stories. Uh, we obviously have some of the stories from Ron DeSantis, um, who just launched his presidential campaign on Twitter this week. Uh, he came out with a, a legislation, a bill that he signed that would reject CBDCs through uh, Article 12 of the Uniform Commercial Code, we'll get into it. But some of the ideas uh, present here, it's about UCC Article 12, uh, the CBDCs, trying to figure out how to define money, the future of cryptocurrencies like uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the rest, and then also the idea of tech neutrality in our law. Um, so to give like the quickest background, you'll have to read it all, but Uniform Commercial Code is essentially the rules of the game for private voluntary transactions. If I am to loan Gretchen money and she lives in Vermont and I happen to live in Maine and we have some kind of obligation, we follow sort of the principles laid out in the Uniform Commercial Code. It's supposed to guarantee the continuity of any commercial law, regardless of my location, whether I be in Florida, whether I be in Nebraska, Oklahoma, or the rest. The idea is that if we ever have a dispute, if we ever go to court, you're going to have a model legislation, a model bill, so the laws will basically reflect each other in either state. And many of you might already be familiar with this, or perhaps you've um, helped pass or reject this in your state. Uh, we'll get into that. The model legislation here is uh, much like at ALEC, is uh, written and maintained by the Uniform Law Commission and the American Law Institute. So there's plenty of attorneys, law professors, business associations, uh, very smart, intelligent people who've read a lot about this stuff, who've thought a lot about it, and want to understand what the commercial rules and policy should be. Now, what's at issue is something called Article 12. And there is a campaign to try to get this input into every state's commercial code. There's a Florida commercial code, there's a North Carolina commercial code, there's one in South Carolina, Utah, and all the rest. And there's an amendment that's been put into the model legislation that actually covers things like digital assets, things like Bitcoin, things like Ethereum. And essentially, it's confusion around what that legislation actually does and what it means that has caused a lot of these issues today. So what it actually does, I'm going like super high level here. You've got a legal mechanism for recognizing something that we call self-custody. So when you use something like Bitcoin, and I have nodes running behind me, um, as a nerd does, when you have self-custody, that means that you own it. You have your private key, which is normally a seed phrase. It's 12 words that you've written down somewhere. Only you own that. Nobody can take that from you. Nobody can hack you online and take that. As long as you have it written down on a piece of paper somewhere safe, that will only ever be yours. If you compare that to the Canadian Freedom Convoy, the money in your bank account, well, that can be frozen and seized at any time. Uh, if you happen to have your money in Silicon Valley Bank and the thing goes bust, if you're above the $250,000 FDIC limit, what happens then? Something is very different when it comes to digital assets because you can actually own them and you can own them to the exclusion of everyone else. So that's what the Uniform Commercial Code tries to understand is how we can represent that in contracts and in private law. So. Actually, what the bill does, the model legislation that is now being implemented in various states, is it actually provides protection for self-custody. And we're talking about traditional lending you know, between banks and consumers, insurance contracts, whether it be through your car insurer or flood insurance, and then just normal commercial transactions between businesses selling goods, selling products. Um, in Bitcoin world, we, we say it's sort of not your keys, not your coins. If you don't have the actual seed phrase, if you don't actually have that private key to unlock 
the Bitcoin and move it from one wallet to the other, uh, you don't own it. And those aren't your coins. So if you happen to buy Bitcoin on Coinbase, uh, Coinbase, Coinbase could go bust tomorrow and you would have no claim to that Bitcoin. That's why self-custody is important. And that's why the Uniform Commercial Code Article 12, what they're actually doing is recognizing that difference. Because the way that money is stored in our economy today, as you heard from our friend from the American Bankers Association, is in the banks. And the banks have uh, sort of their own setup. Uh, some banks have certain risks. Some don't. Well, when you have self-custody of your digital assets, you own them. So what the Article 12 UCC does is it attributes a new term called controllable electronic record. That is a fancy schmancy legal way of essentially saying Bitcoin or Ethereum or NFT, what have you. And it is a way that it can kind of remain tech neutral and can be very forward looking because we don't know what the world of cryptocurrencies or digital assets will look like in 5, 10, 20, 30 years. But we will know that there will be electronic records that I can own, that Gretchen can't own, that anyone else can't own, that will really solely be mine. I will have full control of that at all times unless I transfer my key to someone else. So that's very high level. What it doesn't do, and what you've heard in a couple of the other states where this has come up, is that, well, we have this uh, definition of money. And what we do is we allow for states to basically accept a central bank digital currency, a CBDC. And this is probably the biggest point of contention for this. This is actually not true at all. It does not provide any state loophole for any CBDC or any other kind of money. Uniform commercial code is about voluntary contracts between party A and party B. Government has nothing to do with it. It's just about the assets that you use in any uh, transactions between you and another party. There's no government involvement. Just if you were to go into any kind of claims dispute, what would be the law that would kind of govern that process? So that is one misconception, and it's a very big misconception. And unfortunately, many conservative allies um, have had to face this and are facing a firestorm and unsure about what to do. And uh, there's been a lot of ill will there. I'll get into that. But um, another thing that is claimed is that this redefines money to exclude assets like Bitcoin. We've heard this in various states. Uh, that's also not true. UCC does not define money. It just defines what kind of assets people are trading between each other. And these are legal distinctions that just matter for commercial contracts. And this is, in my opinion, it's in the opinion of law professors that I have interviewed, that I've uh, <laughs> spoken to at hours. Um, it's actually the original people who wrote Article 12 because I tracked them down and uh, was able to interview them and get all the facts and happened to know that they also own crypto. They also own Bitcoin. They also don't like central bank digital currencies. But this is not in any way harm any interest of crypto holders, traders, businesses in that industry. And it's actually a boon for consumers and people who use this kind of stuff. That is at least one big misconception. So the status of this Article 12, you'll notice this beautiful map where you might see your beautiful state either pictured in white, green, or blue. In the blue states, um, these are places where it's actually been enacted. Well, we already have Article 12 of the Uniform Commercial Code. Again, this is like the most boring thing ever that's put into legislation that's usually very long, usually very complicated. But Article 12 is meant to update that law between private parties. And the green states here is where there has been a bill or a version of a bill that has been introduced. Now, I don't think the map has been updated since about November, but uh, where a bill has been introduced and there's at least some kind of process, whether it's in a committee hearing, uh, whether it's being amended, may maybe it's been passed by um, the, either the state house or state senate. So you at least have an idea of, of this is kind of ongoing throughout the various states. Uh, herein enter um, many conservative heroes. Um, Personally, I can say that as well. We have Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida. As you can see, he had a, a press conference, I think about three months ago, um, in which he signed the bill that amended the Uniform Commercial Code in Florida to outlaw a central bank digital currency in Florida. Big Brothers Digital Dollar. And then on the left, we have Governor Kristi Noem of South Dakota. Uh, she is vetoing 
uh, the Uniform Commercial Code Article 12 version in South Dakota with the branding iron. Now, this is um, these are two sort of unfortunate scenarios. Number one for Ron DeSantis, and again, um, many of the ideas espoused by Ron DeSantis, I think, are very much in the realm of uh, free markets, consumer choice, and things that I, I personally am in favor of, the same for the organization. However, the bill that was passed in Florida does absolutely nothing to stop central bank digital currencies. All it does is says essentially that a voluntary transaction between two people cannot, according to that statute, use that asset between each other. It actually does nothing at all to prevent residents of Florida, if there is ever any central bank digital currency at some point in the time, to use CBDCs. It just has to do with essentially this strange legal mechanism when people go to court over the asset that they use between each other. So I think there's the right way to approach it. There's the politically right way. And I understand that it is a bit different when you're talking about uh, grander aspirations from um, the governor's mansion to actually implementing law. Uh, But I do think for those of us who are interested in the future of things like Bitcoin, we have to get it right on the law. And I think we have to be intellectually honest about what things do. Uh, For Christy Nome's case, um, she vetoed the bill. There was an uproar amongst um, some crypto social media influencers who have um, influence in her office and also some conservative groups as well who are also free market groups. Um, I, again, I don't think they have any ill intention. I just think they misunderstood the law, its intent, and what it actually does. It has nothing to do with central bank digital currencies. It doesn't allow one, wouldn't ban one. It really has no say in the matter because it's about the transaction between you and someone else, a voluntary transaction. It's just commercial law. It's the stuff of the boring uh, you know, law school books. It is part of our system because if we have disputes, that's what we're sort of forced to go to. So that's kind of what happened in both of these states. You had sort of this outcry. Um, I'm not sure if there has been a resolution in South Dakota. I'll have to follow up with some of the state lawmakers there. But that caused a misunderstanding that I think is very harmful. And I think now I have made an effort the past few months reaching out to as many different groups as possible reaching out to as many state legislators, reaching out to all of the original social media influencers who made this case erroneously, and many of the conservative groups as well, have explained this, have connected them with the people who actually wrote it so that they can understand that these are people who actually do believe that we need to have um, some kind of legal path for digital assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And also, they all hate central bank digital currencies. These are not CBDC fans writing this. I promise you that. So if these arguments are persisting in your states, or if you're seeing this by various groups, uh, we've made enough of an effort now that I believe they're, con- they're consciously misleading legislators, media, and citizens alike. Uh, we have sat down with many of the groups who made these original claims, tried to explain this to them. And if they're continuing on and going to make a rebellion in your state, um, I think, unfortunately, they're doing that consciously. So I would just be wary of that. I think the general messaging on on this, if it is present in your state, if it is something that is being discussed, it's a good thing for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. What we're doing is we're actually giving for the first time ever in state commercial law, equal footing to internet magic money. I think that is a revolution and it's something that's very good. Another part of a messaging is it's absolutely toothless against CBDCs. It has nothing to do with it, doesn't touch it at all. It's not going to do anything. What it also does is it gives trade and investment protection to those who use cryptocurrencies. That's very important. There are many millennials, Zoomers, Generation Z, who are using this more and more. And we will see an evolution to where even more people will use it and they will have protections in the law. Also with UCC Article 12, in my own opinion, it's actually a free market legal solution for the future of both custody and trade of cryptocurrency. So I'm actually in favor of this. There's a, um, an Indian nation known as the Catawba Nation between North and South Carolina. Um, so they actually do have their own legislative assembly. They do pass their own laws. Um, and they actually did implement UCC Article 12. They tend to be a, a very tech forward uh, institution and um, self-governing tribe, as it were, I believe it's called in the law. 
uh, they've actually analyzed this, they've studied it, and they actually did a very good thing in adopting this. So I think the main point that I, I kind of wanted to iterate here is that there is a lot of opposition towards central bank digital currencies. There's really not, in conservative circles at least, people who are making the case for one. If we, you would like to oppose one, do it through any other means but trying to amend the commercial code. Pass a standalone bill that says central bank digital currencies will not be accepted in my state. That will be much more impactful and will not mess up future opportunities for growth, innovation, investment in things like Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies, and Ethereum. So I, I leave my, my contact here. Again, my organization is Consumer Choice Center, fighting for consumer choice and advocating for that, uh, both at the state level and federal level and also around the world. And uh, just recently, because I've gotten into this mess, a uh, visiting fellow at the Bitcoin Policy Institute. So again, I've uh, taken a lot of time to research this, talk to many people, and uh, it's sort of unfortunate that we're in this. It's an interesting mesh of online uh, influencer culture and state laws. Uh, perhaps you've been approached about this stuff. I, I hope that just gives a, a little bit of clarity. And uh, thank you to Alec for allowing me to talk about it today. Well, thank you. Uh, I know I, I did have people reach out to me, ask me very specifically about this, and I was very grateful to have a resource to reach out to to explain it because um, I was definitely seeing the articles and such saying that the amendment was going to usher in the American central bank digital currency. So it was very interesting to find out that it's the exact opposite. And I would say one thing is I understand in a political situation, because like not everything is just about you know the law and the letter of the law. In a political situation, I actually agree with perhaps what Governor Nome did is that she vetoed it because otherwise she would have been seen to have be endorsing a CBDC. So I understand politically it was advantageous in the moment for her to do that. I would just hope as responsible uh, political advocates, uh, you know, policy analysts, that we would just try to promote another way that we can address these issues without undermining a lot of very good law. So I, I totally understand it in the moment. Hopefully at this point, there's been enough education, enough advocacy that we've pushed against that tide. But again, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a lot of different interest groups in many of your states and localities that uh, put pressure or reach out to your offices or your groups and, and who knows what's happening now. So, I mean, on the map you showed, um, and yes, uh, if anybody has a question for Yael, feel free to put it in the chat or the Q&A box and we'll um, make sure to get to it. Uh, on the map you showed, so it's uh, five states have actually enacted um, this new UCC. For the other states, so now does it just mean like there's a huge patchwork of state uniform commercial codes and trying to um, do business like private transactions between all of them it just gets confusing because now they're all a patchwork um it kind of does and some states will implement parts of it uh, some states will implement others and they won't be as uniform or they probably have existing law where things have already been addressed again the point of the the ucc is not to to have absolutely one law implemented in every state um, many of you are probably familiar with uniform law commission they come up with many different model bills I, I tend to prefer Alex bills, uh, but they come out with various model bills as to how things should be really solely to just integrate things throughout the states. And I think it's a philosophical argument about whether or not we want that to happen. Perhaps we do want things to be a bit different in Florida. Perhaps we do want things to be a bit different in Georgia, whether on social policy or public schools. Um, but that's why UCC refers to commercial law only. It's not intended to create, you know, wacky different monetary policies between states. Um, so there are, again, versions of it. But every version of, of a state's UCC amendment that I've read have been pretty similar. And it's mostly been for the definitions, because that's what's very important is defining certain aspects of the commercial codes. So we can actually get sort of what is the next step or how can we implement this or what will the impact? Okay. And we have a, a question come in. It says, which state has the best legislation drafted? Best state? Uh, I, I don't think there's any best state. Um, realistically, from what I've seen, most of this is pretty boilerplate. Again, I think it's just implementing the ideas and the core principles of Article 12 would be a good thing. I think where the effort has to go is also in communicating that because it is something that is, is 
very revolutionary. I mean, I remember interviewing politicians in Vermont who were accepting Bitcoin for their campaigns in 2012. And, you know, they were all seen as wackos. And here we are 11 years later, and we're talking about implementing this into commercial contracts. So I think we've come a very far, far away uh, for, for people who follow this stuff. Um, there are generally states that have done a very good job generally on things like cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. And I, I've written about that at length. Um, I believe that you know, states like Florida and Wyoming have definitely been very open to it and have actually made sure that it's not too cumbersome if you'd like to have a business there. Um, we, we have uh, general uh, sort of principles that we've put forward. And uh, Representative Matt Lockett did uh, table a um, model bill uh, called the Smart Cryptocurrency Rules Act at last year's ALEC that does talk about some of these issues more from a sort of protecting stance and also talks about money transmission licenses and all of that. And there's some very good states that have actually implemented parts of that or have very lax laws. I think those are the ones to kind of celebrate. But again, this is a, normally a big mishmash. I would not normally ever get involved in commercial law drafting uh, at, you know, at the state legislature, I promise you. But it's just because it became sort of a social media outcry that I thought it was important to weigh in and, and provide a little bit of direction. But if there's a more specific state, I, I will try to find uh, one or two that to point uh, some of the people on the call to. Okay, that would be great. Um, and I've written down the name, so... I can uh, make sure to connect you. Um, okay, longer comment. Um, so Charlie says, I agree with Yael on nearly everything except his conclusion. To the extent that these UCC amendments move us forward to a more digital marketplace, it is by omission failing to protect citizens from the mandating of CBDC for use in all sales transactions. Yes, that is a separate issue from the amendments, which are actually very valuable in protecting freedom by permitting security interests in this collateral, but it needs to be addressed. If not now, when? Hello, Charlie. I know you. Um, here's what I would say is that th there is an appropriate method whereby state legislatures can attempt to thwart CBDCs, which we should recognize do not exist yet, and there is no congressional action that has made this possible. There are murmurs and whispers and study groups, uh, both at the Federal Reserve and otherwise. The easiest way is just to pass a bill saying central bank digital currencies will not apply in this state. That's it. Intermingling it with UCCs just muddies the waters. And if there are any court challenges at any point, we'll also put self-custody and protection of, of that ownership at risk. That's the only reason I kind of make that case. I think it is important, and I will fight tooth and nail with all of my work to oppose central bank digital currencies. Uh, I do think, however, that everything we've seen from different legal, legal analyses, this is not something that will just be implemented by Federal Reserve day two tomorrow. It is something that will require congressional mandate. So I would put more of an emphasis on the federal level there. And if the states would like to pass a bill to do it and just say central bank digital currencies will not be accepted here or cannot be used by state residents, all the better. And we'll fight it out in court all the way. So I'm, I'm favorable back to that as, as well. But just don't put it in the UCC, please. Um, I have a question about that. Oh, I guess Charlie um, says he responded and said, I think it belongs in the UCC because that is the law that governs sales transactions. We're talking about voluntary, again, the legal tender laws are something that is very different and they're separate from the UCC. And I think that would be an area where we could focus. And the way that it is written, even if you do say that central bank digital currencies cannot be considered as money under commercial law or between private transactions, all that means is that between private people you will not have any kind of those protections if you happen to use a CBDC. Again, what the issue is, is that in Florida, looking at the law, they defined a central bank digital currency so narrowly, meaning it has to be on a particular ledger, it has to be issued by the Federal Reserve. If there's one kink in that, then the Florida law does not apply at all. I think the expertise of uh, many of the law professors who've drafted UCC, who've commented, since commented on the Florida law, uh, they make the case that 
none of this applies anyway, and that it is talking about a completely different article. It's a completely different part of state law. Um, so I think that is just more in a disagreement on approach. So I would uh, respectfully disagree. And I think that's why we have, as uh, Gretchen said before, laboratories of democracy uh, to see which one can work it out better. All right, here's another question. Um, so from Bill in Iowa, it was introduced in Iowa as HF 618 and it was deferred until next session next session because of this exact question about its implications for CBDC. What can a state enact as a law or otherwise do to push back against potential digital currency? Does ALC have a model act or some other state? So that, that is a very good question. It's something that I've thought about. Um, we are working with a couple of other groups to at least try to address looking at the various states. Again, I, I think the best conclusion that we've kind of come up with is just a, a simple declaration. Again, these do not have, uh, I believe in Texas, they've done something very similar. Not to say that this would under sort of withhold any kind of legal challenge. Um, I do think it is important to be addressed. And again, it depends on if you want, actually want to make some kind of legal stand and fight this and have the state of, of Iowa or any other uh, sort of be the no-go zone for CBDCs. Or if perhaps you know, there's going to be just a declaratory approach that will be important to signal to your constituents and those who are involved that the state of Iowa will not be accepting a CBDC. Um, if it is of help, um, I do think, you know, we can find um, a, a couple of people we can work with, provide some model language, provide some research into what the best output would be in terms of an anti-CBDC bill. Um, it's just a mistake to do it through UCC. So I do think, again, the standalone would be very good. Um, it does not have to be very complicated uh, because, again, most of this is not being written. And the more complicated that you make an anti-CBDC bill, more holes that it will have because uh, we just don't know what the final plan will be. There are existing central bank digital currencies that exist out there, particularly in the Bahamas. They have one called the Sand Dollar, uh, which is a digital currency. They have one in Nigeria called the e Naira. Uh, but these are really not used by any entities at all. They're used by some institutions between each other, but not used at all by people. Um, I think the fears, though, of a CBDC are very real. I think we should oppose them. Um, however, in some of these other circumstances, they don't seem to be faring out too well. So um, I would count on the uh, federal government's approach to messing up uh, more, more so than being very successful here. But we'll definitely have a think on sort of how to best legislatively respond to this in a very targeted way that would um, withstand the muster of any legal challenge. That's something to, to work on. And um, anyone who would have any questions or thoughts on that, um, Gretchen has my email and everything else. Yes, I'd be very happy to connect everybody um, who's interested in this with you. Uh, so Charlie responded that he and Bill would be delighted to work with you on um, a model bill. And then Mark, um, I'm so glad you asked that. Can we get mo good model legislation drafted between now and the July conference? I would absolutely love that. So uh, shameless plug to get for somebody to draft something uh, to submit to the CIED task force, preferably, um, to consider this topic. Uh, the model policy deadline is Monday, June 12th. So I just need to have some language in by then. It can be draft language that uh, can be amended as we get a little closer to the conference. Um, but yeah, if, if you would like to be part of that group working on it, I'd be happy to connect everybody um, and see what we can accomplish by June 12th. And then we can vote on it in July. Listen to those Gretchen deadlines. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Sure. Um, I guess... We are one minute away. This is somewhat related. Could you give everybody a quick summary of what the ALEC Smart Cryptocurrency Rules Act does? I know it doesn't touch on CBDCs, but it does touch on crypto. That's a very good point. Um, so what it essentially does is aims to have some preemptions um, at the state level, um, basically making it so that no municipality can ban um, the use of cryptocurrencies, um, whether it be for exchange or using it in the store. Um, one thing that's also important is it um, furthers the idea of reciprocity for money transmission licenses. Uh, the license that you need to have in order to move money from A to B as a business, 
Uh, essentially, if you have one that's in Iowa or if you have a license in Vermont, you should be able to apply that license in other states. Um, that is provided within the model legislation. And then final is pricing discrimination. So it's non-pricing discrimination. If you have Bitcoin miners who are operating in your state, uh, public utilities in some left-leaning states have attempted to change the price of the electricity based on what you're doing, uh, which is actually very discriminatory and something we um, wanted to be sure that we can communicate. So that is something that would be available in state law if you would like to uh, pass that in your state to ensure that Bitcoin mining can continue on because it is uh, much like my servers here in the back, my server here and my miner on the ground. Uh, it's just electricity. And we should not have discriminatory pricing on electricity because if we do, um, they certainly won't like you powering, you know, whatever, your barbecue. They won't like you fueling your car. Uh, once we go down the road of discriminati discriminating pricing on the category for home consumers or for businesses, uh, that's a perilous path. Um, so these are all sections contained within Smart Cryptocurrency Rules Act. A lot of different principles, but they can be uh, sort of cut up and implemented uh, one at a time. Wonderful. Thank you, Yael. All right, everybody, it is now three o'clock. So thank you for joining us today.